everyone, Freedy Hero here and welcome to today's video series called Under the Cover. Where we'll be looking into RNG based perk rolls and combinations and seeing how they affect weapon as a whole, from good perk rolls to bad perk rolls. Then giving it a overall verdict if you should hunt one down and add it to your collection or shard it. Today's weapon will be looking into the curated Kindle Orchard hand cannon from the Black Army DLC with its unique role of kill clip, rampage and drop mag. It can only be gotten via the Black Army hand cannon bounty and then officially completing it in the Begurgia Forge or the Gofanon Forge for a chance to it to be dropped as a curated role or a random role. Here is its stats. Impact 84, Range 45, Stability 55, Handling 46, Reload 48, Aim Assist 76, Recoil Direction 99 and Magazine 10. The Kindle Orchard is a 140 RPM adaptive frame hand cannon with a TDK of 0.87 requiring 3 critical hits to kill or 5 body shots to kill. Landing criticals in Crucible are worth 70 and bodies are worth 47 which makes it a very good weapon to use in Crucible against everyone and anyone. It's very similar to the 150 RPM lightweight frame hand cannons with a similar critical of 60 and body of 43 but it has the advantage of having a lower TDK of 0.80 with the same critical and body shot circumstances as the 140 adaptive frames. The curated role company shown can only be gotten from the Begurgia Forge, like I said, and is a very sought after role, as you can't get this role from any of the other weapons in game, making this a very unique role worth keeping. Although you can still get this role via RNG from the Begurgia Forge, for example, or the Go Fallon Forge, but it's still all RNG to get this role, so you may be lucky and get a better role, or vice versa. So this weapon and its role as a whole is amazing to use and has been praised by many players as a top tier weapon to use in the Crucible and PvE content. Not only is this weapon stats alone very balanced for the user to the point of not needing any further enhancements, but the fact that you can have both Kill Clip and Rampage active at the same time allows you to put in some serious work if you're an aggressive PvPer as having both Kill Clip and Rampage active will push your crit to body kill time to the following. So if your Kill Clip was to activate, it would be critical hits would be 93 and then bodies would be 63. If Rampage 1 was to be activated, it would be critical 77, body 52. Rampage 2, critical 84, body 56. Rampage 3, critical 91 and body 61. This will affect your optimal time to kill as well as from needing a 3 critical hits to kill or 5 body shots to just needing 1 critical hit and 2 body shots or 4 body shots to kill. This is just from 5 resilience and below. With these active, it basically turns the weapon into a 110 hand cannon frame, with similar crit to body shot kill, but with a faster RPM and reload speed. From seeing it being used on PC, where stability is near non existent for most weapons, it's quite a beauty to watch, as it can keep up with the most up to date and most common, and seriously, most meta weapons that a lot of users tend to drift towards. Although it's still limited in most engagements as you won't outmaneuver someone with a recluse with massive arms active or a shotgun with max range active for example. In fact this weapon has a very high usage on PC from some of the players I tend to watch so it probably is part of the meta that I'm overlooking. Now adding the fact that drop mag pushes your reload to be much faster than normal means you can engage with this fight straight away as there won't be a delay with you waiting to reload. Meaning your kill streak, if you have one, can be kept up and going without ever slowing down. This really is a good weapon worth investing in if you don't have one now. However, there are some things to note about this role that don't weaken the weapon as a whole, but can be improved on if we get lucky and get a RNG rolled version instead. Firstly, both Kill Clip and Rampage don't stack in terms of damage sadly, as if that was the case, then this will probably make it the best hand cannon to use to date. I would probably put this TTK to be a 1 to 2 tap weapon, most likely 2 tap, which would be quite a surreal and scary thing to face against. They do stack in terms of them being active though, so you can activate both and have your kill clip deactivate, but your rampage will still stay active as long as you keep getting kills, so you'll be able to 3 tap most players very consistently. Secondly, drop mag is both a blessing and a curse to use on weapons with a low reserve to start with. As if you have 10 in the magazine, for example, and you use 1, and then reload the remaining magazine, you're basically wasting around 10, I believe 10 to 9 rounds. That can be quite severe in some PvP or general PvE content. Although getting primary ammo in the Crucible is relatively easy, and the same for PvE content to some degree, 
you will at times not come across any, and you better hope that your secondary will at least help you till then. If we could swap it out for something like a flared magwell or alloy magazine, and use a handcannon loader to further increase our reload, then I would see it being a better choice to go with, with more ammo to spare. Thirdly is range, and although everything on the weapon is very balanced and versatile, its range at 45, or generally 59 now, could be improved on to allow us to face users at longer distances. This isn't much of an issue though, as you're always going to be playing within your effective range, but if you can improve on this area by adding on an, an extra plus 5 or plus 10 in range, along with our range masterwork, and then including our battle choices if we get the choice, then I can perfectly say that you would have one and the only true god roll of its kind. Not saying the cure is raw is bad, but if you can slightly improve this range area to be a bit more, maybe, maybe at 60, 60, 65 at least, then going against people like the Lunar users, for example, we may have a mo much more better chance at facing and defeating them consistently. But this is more down to my experience with weapon and most of my engagements that I've noticed with weapon where I have the higher ground and I still lose out simply because of range. But like I said before, the range isn't that much of an issue to worry about because the weapon is still fantastic to use. So is the QA Kin Orchard worth a keep or a shot? The answer is keep. And this is because the weapon is very balanced out of all weapons I've generally played with. It's generally can be used for all activities and not just PvP. Its flexibility, its fast reload, kill clip, plus rampage combination makes it a very threatening weapon to face against, but also a fantastic weapon for players that like to play aggressive or even subpar. The choice is yours. Like I mentioned before, if you can get the same role but get one with a range increased barrel choice and a different reload perk, then you truly got on a better version than a QA'd roll. So keep it and treasure this one, but don't stop the grind and try to get one that's much more better than the one you currently got, if you've had the time. So that comes to the end of the weapons perk review for this week's content for Under the Cover. I have plenty more weapons to show off with unique perk organizations that you should try and give a go, but I will show that in another time. If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and share the video with others who are interested in this type of stuff. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Anthem based content, if that's your kind of thing. Link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.